Welcome to Dead Man Talking. Tonight's show is a very, very special edition of DMT. Uh, we have been trying to put this together for a few months now, guys. You may remember back uh, a couple of months, a true terrifying dogman encounter involving my dear friend Alicia. Um, a lot of you guys have listened to that story and uh, have great, given some great comments and feedback and support to myself and Alicia as well. And uh, I know we both can't thank you enough for those uh, kind words of support and interesting questions that were raised. Well, guys, shortly after releasing that story, Alicia's son, Owen, contacted me by email saying that he'd had a ghost or a demonic uh, experience a few years back and uh, would like to feature it on my show for me to narrate. Now, of course, I was absolutely, you know, absolutely happy for, to do that, uh, gathered the necessary details, and uh, unfortunately, being the dipstick that I am, I emailed Alicia, Owen's mum, saying that Owen had sent me his story about the, the ghost or demonic entity from their, their old house many years ago. Um, as I sent that email, Owen then emailed me again, saying, by the way, I want to surprise my mum with this as a surprise story. Um, I know she'll love that. But, unfortunately, as I just said, guys, I had let Alicia know that Owen had sent me the story. So the surprise was ruined. More to the point to make this a more credible story for you sceptics out there is Alicia's response. Now, Alicia instantaneously responded with, Oh my God, I had hoped so much that he had forgot this time in our lives. So that's how serious a situation this was. Now, Alicia and Owen have spent the past two months going backwards and forwards with each other about their memory of those times in that house. Uh, the type of things that happened, the feelings, the emotions and have finally got the story over to me a couple of days ago and uh, well, guys this is this is bone chilling scary and I think you will agree of course please do let us know what you know what you think down below in the comments uh, please do like and share please let me know if you prefer some paranormal sides to the, uh, the sort of forest creatures and dogman stories it's interesting to see what type of audience I have out there Without further ado, let's get into tonight's story, guys. From Alicia and Owen, I'd like to entitle The Demon in the Closet. Let's get straight into that. When I was around five, my mum and I moved into a small apartment that was attached to a really super old Victorian house. At first, everything was fine. The first few months seemed okay, but it all changed in the third month. The apartment started to get ridiculously hot. It was April in Michigan. It's not a hot time of year in this state. My mum would be up late most nights. She said she just couldn't sleep. She wasn't comfortable. That wasn't normal for my mum, not at all. Then I met the little girl. She would come out of my wardrobe when I was playing in my room. I told my mum all about her and she was fine with my new friend. Mum had a friend just like mine at her age. I found out later mum had imaginary friends that were small, like a foot tall and lived in the walls of her house. Apparently they had had flowers and other odd things for hats. Weird, I know, but that's her story to tell. She was very nice and great to play with. There were no other kids in the area that we lived in, so I had a new friend to play with, and I was happy. It didn't take long, though, before things got weird. She started to say mean things about my mum, called her bad names. It made me mad. Then she would cry or get angry if I didn't agree with her. She would threaten to not be my friend. Well, I'm stubborn, just like my mum. Always have been, always will be. And I wouldn't agree. Mum didn't do anything wrong. That went on for a bit, but she seemed to give up and go back to normal. Because I wasn't budging on my opinion of my mother. When I was at that age, my mum babied me a lot. 
She lost both parents and her grandparents by this time. Her brothers lived out of state, so I was all she had. She was never mean, I got away with more than I should have. Unfortunately for me, she wished it up before long. No more getting away with everything for me. Damn it. Things started getting really, really weird one night. Mum picked me up on her way home from work and we walked into our apartment. Mum flipped on the lights and there were like 10 flies on the light fixture. So, Mum grabbed the kitchen towel and swung it at the fixture. The fixture tipped when she hit it and flies just poured out of it. It was disgusting. My mother is not a screamer. I've never heard her scream over anything except this. Thousands and thousands of flies were everywhere. Mum grabbed me and the dog and ran out the door. She was pissed. We went to Walmart. She bought four cans of fly spray, gloves and a bandana. She made me and Sahara our best dog ever. Love you and miss you Sahara. Sit in the car. She put on the bandana over her face, put her gloves on and disappeared into the apartment. Maybe 10 minutes later, she came out, took off her gloves and bandana, and we left. We stayed at a hotel overnight. When we went home the next day, it was nasty. It was fly genocide. They were all over. Some were still alive, but mum had spray left. She plugged in the vacuum and started vacuuming. She had to empty the canister a total of three times. She went back to my room to get started and when she opened the door it was just fine. No dead flies anywhere. Hmm. Well, she went on to bleach surfaces and hug our dog apologising for having to be there with the flies for God knows how long. I asked her about the fact that my room had no flies. She said she just went through every room in the house, a can in each hand and sprayed like a maniac. She then said, you know what, I didn't close your door either. I left all the doors open so the spray would get everywhere. I remember thinking how fun <laughs> it was going to be to clean all your toys off after the spray got onto them. But she remembers clearly opening my door. And it was only 10 years ago and believe me, mum's got a great memory. My stepdad is always saying that, laugh my ass off. The day was spent cleaning and by night time, everything seemed normal. Mum demanded the landlord come over and look to see what was going on. He in turn called an exterminator. No one could figure out why or how that many flies were there. She kept the garbage bag she dumped the flies in. The exterminator was absolutely grossed out. That's pretty bad, he said. Anyway, the guy put out fly bait and stuff like that. This next part I didn't know about till I decided to write this and mum was recording everything. Mum hated her room so she started sleeping in the living room. Her room just had a really, really weird vibe to it. And she always felt like she was being watched. At night, she would hear whispering. And on the last night she ever slept in there, she said she was hearing the whispers and then one was right in her ear. There was a long sound and she felt spittle hit her ear and cheek. She ran out and touched her cheek and it was wet. I know everyone is thinking, why didn't you move? Well, my mum was a single mum struggling to make it on her own with no help from the state. She didn't want it. So, she barricaded off her room. Things seemed okay for a short time. My friend kept visiting, but she started saying odd things as well. Things that were dark. Don't you sometimes want to just smack your mummy? Or, she is so mean, you should put a knife in her throat. I would just ignore her stupid outbursts, but they kept getting more frequent. I told mum that she was scaring me. So mum chained the wardrobe door shut 
and sat stuff in front of the door, mainly just to make me feel better. Then, the night, it all went to hell. Mum had the day off, so she was cleaning and talking on the phone to my Uncle Jeff about everything that was going on. He wanted us out of there straight away and said he was sending money. She finally agreed. I don't know if it hurt her or what, but the entire apartment got heavy. You could see a denseness in the air like high humidity. Sahara, our dog, started rolling over onto her back, yipping and doing the submissive thing. Mum got upset and called a friend for help. She didn't know what to do. As she was on the phone, the little girl just appeared by my toy box. She was angry. She said, if I needed to go cut my mum, she said, I needed to go cut my mum's throat now. And that was it. I ran out to the living room crying and screamed that I wanted to go right now. Then I told her what she'd said. Mum didn't get scared. She got angry. She sent Sahara and I outside with Amanda, her friend, and marched into my room. As she stood there looking, the chains started shaking like crazy. We could hear it outside. Sahara started barking. Mum came out with a huge suitcase and said, get in the car, and that was it. I never went back. My mum had to pack up, but she was saying prayers the whole time, hoping it would help. I'm sure by now you may have figured out what we think it was. I personally don't like to say the word, so DMT, you can feel free to say it. It's up to you. It was a demon. Definitely a demon. Thanks for listening. Owen. Wow, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Owen. Um, working so hard to put that all together and recall such a, a horrific time in your lives. Um, I would, probably wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Um, people, we have got some pictures for you that you might have seen in this video. Uh, they are actually the pictures of the fly crime scene that uh, Alicia caused fly genocide <laughs> um, just to show you quite how many flies were there in such a short amount of time um, I hope you guys enjoyed this I'm sure you did please do let us know what you think down below in the comments if you haven't subscribed to dead man talking please do subscribe your support is more than welcome and as ever guys please like and share and remember be safe not sorry